And uh, tornadoes, we don't mess with them, so here we go. We're just going to keep you up to date on this one here. Now, I want you to know that this is uh, a squall line. This is warned all up and down. The tornadoes get all the attention, but this is literally now quite the wind machine all the way up and down this line. So, to me, a 70 mile an hour wind that's as long as the county is really, really a bad deal. And, and so whether or not you get uh, an EF0 spin-up tornado in the middle of that doesn't matter. Uh, that is pretty much the same deal. Shelf cloud starting to move its way on in. Our camera is located at Portsmouth Raceway Park, uh, just across Route 73 Bridge, right there on the west end of Portsmouth. And there you can see the shelf cloud now beginning to form and move toward this location. Now, if it really did have a large tornado, we would see something that looks like an elephant trunk extending back down to the ground. Now, what we don't have is that. What we do have is a strong and intense updraft up here rotating, have some very bright reds, that's likely some hail, and this is your updraft right here. This is the punch of the updraft. The warning itself was canceled. That doesn't mean that things are really better. And in fact, just to your northwest now, we see another inflection point, and when we were checking the 3D, this is where the updraft is taken over. Remember, these things are not just staying in their lanes the whole time. They shift and they move. This means that it's likely going to be into the Huntington area before 9.30 at this pace. So again, your next communities would be Greenup, Ashland, Ironton, Huntington. Is everyone going to get into this? Yes. Is it all going to be severe? That we don't know. Quite likely it will be. Are we all going to have problems with flooding? No, but where would we have problems with flooding? Right where we have this warning here. That's about a mile away and literally, look at that, look at that, my goodness. That is a wall of water right there. We did have flooding, we had Mason County, we had Jackson County in West Virginia, but especially down here, Southern Gallia, and this was two inches in three hours. That's luckily a narrow avenue, but still not great. Storm survey yesterday, we showed you all the business that happened in Ashland and in Ironton with the torn off roofs, things as such as that, the phone poles, the electric poles that uh, were bent over. Well, yesterday it was about nine in the morning and it turns out it was a microburst, about 4,000 feet length on that particular section of the storm. Nobody was hurt, but there was obviously some problem there with the damage. That wind, again, was estimated at about 105 miles per hour from a microburst. Air coming down out of a storm, it's just like a big bubble of air that just kind of bombs out on the ground right there and then can create damage. So it's a localized pocket of rapidly sinking air within a storm that's less than about two and a half miles in diameter. And the wind can exceed 100 miles per hour, as we talked about. So that's exactly what we saw yesterday. Friday, no rain during the daytime showers and a thunderstorm that will weaken during the night and then cold enough to see this wrap up as a mountain snowflake Saturday night. So Friday night in particular, the severe thunderstorm risks Chicago, Detroit, right up to about the doorstep. We'll be talking more about that. I would be watching out for possibly some real strong stuff between Indianapolis and Fort Wayne if you're traveling that way. If you'll note, it kind of dies down, but there's still a good amount of uncertainty at this time. So make sure that you stay with us. Huntington, only 5.9 inches of snow. And we had 20 last year. So yeah, we're definitely in a snow drought, not a complete drought. This is precipitation over the past 45 days and even snow melted into water six to eight inches of precip. Not terrible. And in fact, that's more than our friends over here to the east and to the west. But this is something I guarantee you're not going to find on television anywhere here or anywhere in the world. Are you ready for it? It's a chicken in a sweater because it's cold. It only makes sense to me. It's cold. Have you been out? Have you guys been outside? I have. Yes, of course. <laughs> it makes sense. I mean, you saw this last week. This thing took off. And so now today oh. I go into my inbox and Whoa. what do we have? You think that the sweater was something? Here's a pampered chicken. Oh. Uh, Oscar the chicken, Patrick. This is the life, really. Have you heard that there's like a thing about drafts on the internet? It's a thing, okay, just maybe, maybe oh, you've yeah. heard about that. All right, so let's do today's temperatures by the numbers. So this is normal highs, and this is today's high right there. Does this start to make a little more sense? So the normal high is 59, but today we only reached 50 degrees. You gotta be careful where you're standing at the train station when it snows, otherwise this will happen to you. Poof, I mean, wow, man. Can I do it? I don't know. Let's see, let's try. It's gonna work. Look at only if I, whoa. <laughs>
Let's go. We're at the driving range at Coonskin Park. My chauffeur tonight is Bryce Goldsmith, who's been here working at the range. And uh, this could be a bit of a dangerous job. Have you ever been hit as you're driving one of these? A couple times. And there's no showers here nearby. There we go. That's better, guys. That was a good one. Right on the right <laughs> side. This is your job all summer long, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, earplugs. I might suggest earplugs. Hey, everybody. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the eclipse. Just a couple of safety reminders. First of all, just don't look at the sun unless you have the proper protection. Regular glasses, not proper protection. These, not proper protection. These are proper protection. What you want to look for is the little tag that says ISO. ISO 12312-2. Look for the little safety ISO. When you put them on, unless you're looking at the sun, you really shouldn't see anything. What about your pets? This is Lily. She's a Karen Terrier. A lot of confusion is out there on the internet about your pets. First of all, if you can get your dogs or your cats to wear these, good luck. You're not doing it, are you? No, you're not going to do it. Second of all, you have to know pets, animals, by their very nature, know not to look at the sun. When was the last time you ever looked at the sun directly? Never? Didn't think so. And if the sun gets in their eyes, what do they do? You squint? There's nothing new going on except for the moon passing in front of the sun. You're excited, aren't you? If you want to leave the pets inside, that's totally fine, but it's not going to hurt them to be outside. Once again, my dog is smarter than me. So to sum up, these, no. These, no. Only with these. Otherwise, no go. Also, we're gonna have stuff all over the internet, all over the television. That's a really great way to make sure that you don't miss what's going on. Check out also all the NASA websites. So if you don't get a great picture, just take it from there, save it off the computer. You can even print it out for later use or just put it on your Facebook page. These also work great for naps. We're just talking about weather models. You don't want to get me going on that. <laughs> you really don't. All right, in the meantime, <laughs> we look out to the west in Charleston, and it's pretty quiet right now. Look, we love weather models here. We really do. But they change because what's here today is probably here tomorrow. So that's why we stay on top of this stuff. And I'll show you the very latest in a quick minute. 61 degrees right now. That feels great, but it's windy. Why is it windy? Large area of low pressure and a lot of lines make weather people feel really good when they look at the map. So it looks really scientific. So basically you have a big low there, a big high here. And when you shake up the can of pop and you open it, that's high pressure trying to get to low pressure. Psh, all the air goes out or the tennis balls when you open that, psh, that kind of thing. So that's all that's happening here. That's wind going from high pressure to low pressure and it comes through here very stout. And look at these wind speeds. There you go, 23 mile an hour gust in Huntington, 22 miles an hour in Charleston. The further north you go, closer to that low, you have 30 mile an hour wind gust in Parkersburg, 28 miles an hour in Athens. Okay, school bus forecast tomorrow, the wind drops off because that high and that low are not as close together and they're kind of relaxing. And we have about 42 degrees. It'll still be a little breezy tomorrow, not terribly windy. So, and warmer too, by the way, I should bring that up. Tomorrow's this really great day and then things will start to get pretty cold. So where is the storm that we're dealing with possibly on the weekend? Again, it's out in the Pacific, 1,100 miles away from the coast. This thing will be over the coast by about Friday. And that's when weather models start getting a better idea. Because why? Well, we don't have a whole lot of weather balloons out here to put into the models, but we sure do over here. So once it gets closer to the land, then we have a good sense. The fact that we even know five, six days out that there might be something is pretty amazing in and of itself. But watch this tonight. It's all quiet. We move throughout the daytime tomorrow. It's a great warm day, really going to be nice. And then watch this. Here comes some rain and maybe some snow, but we're talking about two in the morning. Most of us just rain, but snow here to the north and snow to the east. And then that dissipates and goes away. It'll be a cooler day on Friday. Then you move to Saturday and Saturday. It looks like this. Here comes that storm now and watch this. It kind of just goes to the south. Now that's today's weather model. Can it move back to the north? Sure, but the odds and the trends, that's what we're looking for. Trends, south, 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 south. And, and for now, that is really good reasoning to say we really don't think that there's a whole lot that's going to happen Saturday night. In fact, Monday night might bring us more of a coating of snow. And so in terms of snowfall, there's your Friday morning snow, and then this is your Saturday night snow. And 
Boy, none of that is very impressive, is it? And so that's how things change. And there's your range game. Remember yesterday's range was from like zero to eight, and now it's like, oh, maybe an inch or two at best. So, all right, don't forget. <laughs> don't forget, by the way, Sunday morning, 2 a.m. or Saturday night when you go to bed, spring forward one hour with the clocks out there and 40 degrees for tonight and your high tomorrow, almost 70 degrees, tons of sun, warm and breezy. If you're playing baseball tomorrow, that would be a nice day for that, wouldn't it? And then again, your seven-day outlook is cold for, well, colder for Friday and real cold Saturday and dry. And it's a cold day Sunday. And then we have uh, on and off precip next week. But a lot of people are heading indoors because we have a big tournament going on. Yes. Oh, boy, we've got a number of big tournaments going on. The high school state tournament underway for the girls officially today. We've got highlights. Plus